just a few minutes and I want you to pray for me. Would you do that? Would you pray and give the Lord your attention and the Word of God? And, and you know, we need to, to hear something. We need to receive something from the Spirit of the Lord, don't we? I thought as, uh, you know, the lesson this morning and then Caleb's testimony and talking about reading the Word of God, uh, Crystal's boost about the missions and, and how... You know, we have an abundance of Bibles here in our presence. Not only do we have those, but we have audio tapes. I remember many, many, many years ago, the Bible on cassette. You could stick in your car as you're riding down the road or wherever you may be, and the Word of God be ministering to you. Now, some of us have jobs, computers sitting right in front of us. We have access if we so choose all day long to scroll and read the Word of God, how often do we take advantage of it? God help us. I want to speak to us this morning about our walk with the Lord. How many has a walk? Do you have a walk with the Lord today? I want to speak to us about that walk, the spiritual walk, our walk of life with the Lord. Our walk should be, or the concern of our walk should be, priority number one in our life. How we walk, where we walk, we need to understand there is a bad way of sin and a good way of of holiness. There are only two ways. A good and evil, right and wrong, there's only two destinations for eternity, that being heaven or hell. There's no middle place, no neutral destination. Eternity will swallow up all men and divide them into two categories, the godly and the ungodly. But what about right now? We often look at eternity as being many miles down the road. Heaven or hell, many miles down the road. Well, what about our walk with God? That's not many miles down the road. That is right now, this very hour. You and I are traveling at light speed in one direction or the other. Do you realize that? Somebody say, Lord bless the preacher this morning. You and I are traveling at light speed in one direction or the other. We're not standing still. We're not in the, in the middle trying to make up our mind which way we... No, you're on one way or the other. Why do you say light speed? Do you know at any moment one, we're one breath away from our last breath? Ah. Only, only one heartbeat away from eternity. Yes, we are traveling at light speed into eternity today. The road that you're on right now is carrying you into eternity at light speed. Mm -mm. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. Jesus says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Jesus spoke of two ways. He spoke of the best and the worst of it according to their destinations. One leads to life, and one leads to destruction. I want to talk about 
the wide gate and the broad way. This is serious business. You realize that? The wide gate and the broad way, listen, it allures men into the way. It lures men and multitudes of men. Jesus used the word many. Many there be which go in there at. Can you give me your attention, please? I'm preaching the Word of God this morning, and I'm trying to direct us all to heaven. If this ain't important to you, nothing is. I am nothing and nobody. I am only a man. But this right here is the word of God. That's what separates us. The word of God. The spirit of the Lord who is reaching out to you right now. Saying, would you hear? Would you hear? We're going to get somewhere in just a minute. But this wide and broad way. It will allure men into its passage. Not only will it allure them, but it will keep them. Uh Uh-huh. I was traveling home the other day. Anybody know where Dalton Pike is? I was traveling down Dalton Pike. It was late in the afternoon. I can't remember. I'm probably five, four or five o'clock. I was in the left lane because I was getting ready to make a left turn right there at my home. Less maybe than a half mile from my home. The traffic was so heavy. A police car was behind me. Anytime I see one of those guys, I I get out of his way, just let him go on. I moved over to the right lane, Brother Tom. He went on by me, and I thought, I got better get back over because I'm going to turn right here. Turn my signal on, traffic, zoom, 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 zoom. I try to ease over into the lane, zoom, zoom, zoom. I slow down, almost stop. Zoom, they're behind me, they're coming around, zoom, zoom, zoom. I need to turn right here. Nobody cared. Nobody slowed down, nobody let me in. You know what I had to do? Instead of causing an accident, I had to step on the gas and go on down the road and find a place to turn around. Let me tell you something. The wide way, the broad way, it will suck you in. And the first thing you know, you cannot get out of it. We're not talking about Dalton Pike. But we're talking about the broad way that leads to destruction of your soul. Oh, God help us. Many liberties in this broad way. There are many liberties. It is a wide open range, no restraints. Men are free to enjoy their lust, to feed their appetite for sin, to follow their heart, to enjoy the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life without any correction. Yes, the wide gate allures and keeps men and women. People don't like correction. Therefore, they choose the wide way, the broad way. It's wide open. Many liberties there. You can follow your own heart, your own lust, your own desires. Huh? Yeah. The broad way. There's no hedges there. But listen, there's many paths, many choices of sinful lifestyles, though contrary to one another, all are embraced and welcomed on this way. Hmm. All are embraced. When you're on the wide, broad way, there may be somebody traveling right beside of you that you turn your nose up to their lifestyle. Well, guess what? You're on the same road they're on. Hmm. 
And somewhere along the way, everybody is embraced. No lane restrictions. I got a little uh, device, I guess. One of the things come on that car when we bought it is lane uh, correction. You can be driving down the road. If you get too close to, to the side of your lane, it'll beep, 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 beep. It, it's telling you, get back in your lane. Well, if you get too close, it'll grab a hold of that steering wheel and pull it back in the lane for you. You know what I did like most people do? I disarm that thing. I want control. People want control of their lifestyles. They want to travel in this broad way and they don't want no restrictions. They don't want no corrections. Wherever they go, they don't want to be pulled back into the lane. Oh God, help us. No restrictions, no corrections. You're free to wander endlessly. Listen, there may be a front road of open profaneness and there may be a back road of closed hypocrisy, but they're all on the broad way. Hmm. I don't want to travel the broad way. How about you? Huh? I want the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God to be able to govern and direct me and pull me in to the path that is straight and narrow. Huh? Jesus said, Many there be that go in thereat. You have one comfort when you travel the broad way. There's going to be a lot of others traveling with you. You ever heard somebody say, if you talk to them about going to hell, well, I'll tell you what, I won't be by myself. Well, congratulations. God help us. Is that any comfort to us today to know I won't be by myself? Hmm. No, it's not much comfort. One comfort, you'll not be alone. Jesus said there's many who will be traveling. Many to encourage you. You ever try, you ever notice some people you get around, maybe those on the job or school or whatever, the, the more you try to live right, the more they try to encourage you not to. The more they influence you, that's not necessary. Yeah. Many travel this road. And this road will allure you and draw you in. But listen, if you follow the multitude, it will be to do evil. Huh. It will be to do evil. Why are there so many? Jesus said, many there be that go in there it. Have you ever thought about it? Why? Well, he answers that. Look at verse 14. He answers that very simply. Because... <laughs> Because why? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. That's why there's so many in the broad way. The straight and narrow is too straight and narrow for them. Oh God help us. If you go with the crowd, it will be the wrong way. It will allure you, pull you, draw you, entice you. Now listen, it's natural to want to go with the crowd, ain't it? Not spiritual, but natural to want to go with the crowd. But listen, to roll with the flow. To flow with the current. Somebody said it. Why? Because it's easy? Right. Get into the flow and just roll with the flow. How many has ever been tubing? It's fun. Get on a big tube out there in the river and all you got to do is just lay back and it'll carry you. 
That's what the broad way is like. That's why so many find themselves in it. It's easier to flow with the current downstream. Even the Bible tells us there's pleasure in sin for a season. Right? But listen, we need to heed the warning today. My dad was, he likes to fly fish, and he was up in Nanahala Gorge a few years ago, up there in the river. The water was down, and he was fishing, and he kept working his way out into the river up there in a wide spot, and he was about halfway out in the middle of that river. Water about up to his knees. He was fishing, catching a few fish, having a good time. And all of a sudden, he heard a roar. And something didn't feel right to him. And the water began to rise fast. What happened? They opened the floodgates upstream. They always sound an alarm, a siren, a warning before they open those floodgates that tells everyone, get out of the way. He didn't hear the siren. He didn't hear the warning. But all of a sudden, being out in the broad way of that river, all of a sudden, like that, it wasn't a little stream anymore. It became a raging river. This 70-year-old man out in the middle of it with rocks to climb over began to make his way to the bank. He said he barely escaped those waters. Let me tell you something. The broad way will suck you in. Let me tell you something else. Jesus right now is sounding an alarm saying, take heed. It leads to destruction. Would we hear the alarm today? Would we hear the alarm? Listen, when you don't hear the alarm and heed the alarm, you're in dangerous territory. We must heed the alarm of the words of Jesus, the broad way that leadeth to destruction. What destruction? Death, eternal death, and eternal hell, and the eternal lake of fire. That's what Christ was sounding the alarm about. But he says, but there is a straight gate. Huh. There is a straight gate. Now I want us to understand something. He's not speaking about the pearly gates. Uh-uh. He's speaking about a gate right here, right now, today. We don't stand before the pearly gates today. Right? But he said there is a straight gate. So many people think somewhere a hundred years down the road they'll make a decision to enter into heaven. You better be making a decision right now, today. The straight gate, not the pearly gates, but here and now. Listen. This is in reference to your conversion, the regeneration, being born again, being saved, becoming a new creature. It's what Christ was speaking about, the straight gate. For this is the way. Christ is the way. He's the only way. This is your entrance that leads to the narrow way that will lead you to life. There are some people who preach today, listen to this, that say there is allowances for some sins, some habits. Let me see what I wrote down here. I don't want to forget anything. Some lifestyles, some habits that you can maintain in your life and still be saved. Let me say this. Wrong bishops that are preaching this to people. That some people can maintain certain habits in their life and they're still saved. Wrong. Wrong. 
Jesus said there is a straight gate and a narrow way. Mm. You won't maintain sin in your life and be saved. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Paul said we become a new creature. Right? All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We pass out of a state of sin into a state of grace only by the new birth. Listen. Can a drunkard come in this church right here today, fall down on his knees and be saved? Absolutely. All of us know Sister Linda, what's her? Rhodes. Sister Linda Rhodes, good friend of ours. I couldn't even remember her name. She has a wonderful testimony that one night she stepped into the church of God so drunk she had her clothes on backwards. Huh? Jesus gracefully, mercifully saved her in that service that night. And she left sober. Can she go home and continue to hit the bottle and still be saved? You better bet she can't. Why? The Spirit of God. When you become a new creature, the Spirit of God, Jesus said, enter in at the straight gate. Hmm. The Spirit of God done a work in her life that night. She didn't need nobody to say, now you're going to have to put the bottle away. Uh -uh. We better be careful how we make allowances for people and with sin in their life and lead them to believe they are still saved. God help us. There's going to be some ministers one day with some answering to do. Jesus said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. Right? In order to enter into the kingdom of God, Nicodemus, ye must be born again. How can this be, Lord? When a man is old... How can he enter again the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, you must be born again by the Spirit of God. Mm. Huh? See, this, when the Spirit does a work, we don't have to worry about people maintaining sin in their life. Ye must be born again. How, Lord? By the Spirit you know, some people's problem who, who claim salvation, they ain't never had a spiritual experience with the Lord. Hmm. There is a narrow way, a straight gate, a narrow way, which is hard to find, hard to get through. Many search for another way. But Jesus said, enter ye in at the straight gate. Jonathan, the son of Saul, became an instrument of the Lord one day. Israel was in a dire straight place with the Philistines. And the Bible says that there was no smith to be found in all Israel. Right? Right? The Philistines had took care of all that business and they had broke down all of the smith's shop that they didn't want the, the Israelites to be making their own weapons. And so any of their plows that needed, all they had was a file in all of Israel. They might could sharpen their plow a little bit or something, but they weren't going to be making those swords or any spears. The Bible says there was not a smith to be found in all of Israel. And here they are, fixing to go into battle with the Philistines, and all they had was clubs or sticks or slings or something, maybe a big rock, you know, that they was going to throw at this Philistine army. But the Spirit of the Lord moved on Jonathan and directed him 
one man, there was two swords in all of Israel. Saul had one and Jonathan had one is what the Bible says. But Jonathan became an instrument of the Lord to move into, right into the Philistine camp, right into their garrison. One man with one sword But when the Spirit of the Lord directed him, he didn't walk out there right in the middle of all of them, but the Lord directed him into a little straight and narrow path. The Bible says the path that he chose had sharp rocks on one side and sharp rocks on the other side, and he worked his way into that path right into the middle of their garrison. And the Lord moved on Jonathan, and he killed 12 Philistines, 20, I believe, Philistines, like that. And the Spirit of the Lord moved and fought the battle for Israel. Why? Because one man could be directed in a straight and narrow way. You want to see God move in your life? We're going to have to find the straight and narrow You'll find this way only with a new heart, a new spirit. Old things are passed away, corrupt habits, customs, lifestyles, desires, your demeanor, your attitude, your spirit, your complete direction of life will change. Mm. I want to say something to you this morning. Every one of us should raise our hands this morning and say, thank God, There is a straight and narrow way and it has not been shut up before me. But I can enter in to the straight and narrow way. If you travel down into North Carolina, there's a road there called Highway 220. 220 South carries you through North Carolina. But when you get to Rockingham, North Carolina, you ever traveled, any of you? When you get to Rockingham, North Carolina... You begin to see signs, all traffic must exit. All traffic must exit. Why? The road ends right there. 220 South travels no further. Listen, when you enter into the straight and narrow, there will never be a detour. There will never be a closed sign that says you must exit here, but the straight and narrow will carry you to glory. All the way to glory. Every one of us should thank God this morning that there is a straight and narrow way that we can enter into. Thank the Lord that it's not shut up to us. In the parable of the ten virgins, the five foolish ran out of oil. And while they were gone to buy more oil, Matthew 25 and 10, the Bible says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Uh Uh-oh. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was, what? Shut. Listen, this parable right here is speaking to us today. Huh. All these five foolish, they had their minds on other things. They didn't make the preparation that they needed to. Huh? Huh? And when they realize, oh man, I'm in a mess, and they run out to buy more oil, that's the, that's the hour that the bridegroom came. Listen, we're traveling at the speed of light into our eternal destination right this minute. In Genesis chapter 7, the Lord had moved on Noah to build an ark. He built it. The Lord was moving on the animals to prepare them. One day, God spoke to Noah. He said, come thou and all thy house into the ark. Amen. Oh, today, God said, come thou, Noah, and all thy house into the ark. You know what Jesus is saying, enter ye in. Verse 16 there in Genesis 7, part of that verse says, After they entered into the ark, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord moved on the animals. They moved into the ark. 
And the Bible says, and the Lord shut him in. Do we realize that at one point or another, every opportunity that we have to enter into the straight and narrow, that one day it could be shut? Hmm. There's coming a day of rapture. How many believe that? Somebody push your neighbor, wake him up, say, you ready for the rapture? You ready for the rapture? The Lord, one day there's a rapture coming. Uh Uh-oh. The Holy Ghost will be gone. When the dead in Christ rise, we which are alive and remain, go up and meet them into the clouds forever to be with the Lord. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost will leave this earth. Listen, at that point, the grace dispensation, the door will be shut. Mm. The children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible says, with a high hand, and there was not a feeble one among them. They marched out of Egypt. The first place they came to was the Red Sea. God did not drain all of the waters out of the Red Sea that they could just casually, you know, but he made a little straight and narrow path for them, didn't he? (laughs) He parted the waters on each side. If you're getting across, you're going this way right here. The Red Sea became their straight gate that led them into the wilderness. This narrow way, it was hedged in by divine law, that was designed to lead them to the promised land. People say today, Brother Pulliam, we're not under the law anymore. Right, we're under grace. Praise be to God. Grace is our straight gate. Oh, you mean it's still straight? Yeah, it's still straight. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus himself said, enter ye in at the straight gate. What was he talking about? Grace. (laughs) The grace and mercy of God is still a straight and narrow way. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, few there be that find it. Uh Uh-oh. Many pass by it through carelessness, not willing to take the pains to find it. They see no need to change. How many of you have ever heard the little phrase, I'm good? Some people, you can ask them anything, I'm good. You want a Coke? I'm good. You want $100? I'm good. Huh. This is the people's attitude about eternity. I'm good. They don't want to change. They don't see no need to change. The last thing they want you to do is talk to them about changing. Huh. Others shun the straight and narrow, despising to be limited, restrained, or governed. People don't like government. You know, the Bible tells us that while Noah was building the ark, while it was preparing, that the long-suffering of God waited And it says, few were saved. Mm -hmm. Only eight souls. We must remember the straight and narrow leads to life. But listen, you have a duty. You must enter in. Mm -hmm. You won't accidentally stumble into heaven. I'm going to say that again because... You won't accidentally stumble into heaven. My granddaddy told me a story. He grew up in the 20s during the Great Depression. He went from door to door, hopped freight trains from town to town, had great effort in what? Finding his next meal. He said that he was walking down a road one day, wondering where he was going to eat next. And he came across this little old country church. 
And as he got close, everybody was outside, and they had the table spread, and they was having dinner on the ground. And he walked up. Here's a man doing the Great Depression, starving. He walked up and began to say, hey, how y'all doing? Shake hands. They say, hey, brother, come on, get you a plate. That was his lucky day, wasn't it? But let me tell you something. You won't accidentally stumble your way into heaven. You won't be on the broad and wide and broad way one day and all of a sudden see a sign that says heaven's this way. Mm -mm, It don't happen like that. I've thought many times since he told me that story bring tears to my eyes. You know, but heaven won't be that way. You won't accidentally stumble into the great homecoming day one day. Ye must enter in. No one in prison clothes, listen, the stripes with a ball and chain condemned man with a death sentence on his head. Standing before the warden with a new suit of clothes with the keys to the chains in his hand, And saying, hey, buddy, you know, this path right over here is straight and narrow. You're going to have some hard times, but you're welcome to go that way. But here, the wide and broad way, this way right here leads straight down to the gallows. It don't take a rocket scientist to figure it out, does it? He'd say, I'll try the straight and narrow. Let me, give me a chance at the straight and narrow. Listen, some of us don't understand the seriousness of our soul right now, this very hour, decisions that we're making. We're ushering ourselves at light speed out into eternity. Look with me in Luke chapter 13. I'm going to try to close Luke chapter 13, verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. I'm going to try to cut this short. But Jesus' response to the question, Lord, are there few that be saved? Was quick. And a sharp response. Strive. You, listen, if you're thinking about who's going to be saved, you better keep this in mind. You better strive. Hmm. Strive means to fight, to struggle, to endeavor with strenuous zeal. You seen any striving around you lately? It is a hard matter to get to heaven. It requires a great deal of pain and diligence. In Ezekiel chapter 47, Ezekiel had a vision there of the throne and the waters that issued out, the waters to the ankle and the knees and the loins and the waters to swim in. But listen, the Bible says, and then he was carried back to the brink of the river. And he saw something else. He saw a river. And Brother Chris done got on part of my message this morning. I'm tired of him still in my notes and thoughts. I'm going to start preaching, then let him teach. See how he likes that. I'm just joking, brother. You know it. But he talked about the Dead Sea this morning. Well, I want to speak to us just a minute about it. Ezekiel saw a river that was flowing. Hmm. And where this river flowed, everywhere it touched, it brought life. Has anybody got that chapter right there, 47? Somebody read, I believe it's 17. Verse 17, what's that say? Let me find it, that's wrong. Pray for me just a minute. Verse 11, brother, retry that. Now listen. For the mighty places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. 
Uh oh. Now Ezekiel saw a river that was flowing. <laughs> and everywhere it went, life. Huh? And it had healing powers. But then he said, but the miry places and the marshes, they're not going to be healed. They'll be turned to salt. Listen, Brother Chris already told us this morning, the Jordan River flows. Flows into the Sea of Galilee. And from there it empties into what's called the mouth of the river, the Dead Sea. Now listen. A lot of fish are smart enough to swim upstream. Hmm? Huh? They strive. They know it's for their welfare and their life that they strive upstream. Hmm? They, it's more easier for them to feed stuff that's coming through them. They striving. But the whole time this river is flowing and it's washing everything this way. And some gets carried with the current. <laughs> some gets in the broad and wide way and gets swept into the Sea of Galilee. Well, that's not far enough. It carries them into the Dead Sea. Brother Chris already told us this morning, you know what lives in the Dead Sea? Nothing. We better learn to strive. We better learn to look for the straight and narrow. These little fish that swim upstream, oh, that's a great task. But let me tell you something about striving. In Japan and in Hawaii, probably some other places, there's these majestic waterfalls. 300 feet up yonder. Do you know there's little fish that strive against the current up the waterfall? Brother Pulliam, you're pulling my leg. Oh, no. You believe a fish can swim upstream 300 feet out of the salty waters, towage, fresh water? They're called koi, K-O-I. How do they do that? They got little suction cups on their bellies. And the rock, sharp rocks, the little narrow paths that's in those waterfalls, their suction cups grab a hold. And in a moment, in the, in the blink of an eye, they turn her loose and they lunge and they grab a hold again. And they strive against the current. Let me tell you something. If we enter into the straight and narrow, we're going to do some striving. You're not going to stumble your way into heaven. Jesus said, strive. Somebody asked him, Lord, is there, is there just going to be few? How many will there be that makes it? Lord, he said, you better strive. I want to make it, don't you? The preacher believes it's going to take more striving than what I've been doing. Listen, there is an awful strong current in the broad way uh, that's coming against you. And we better strive to enter in or we won't make it. Stand with us this morning. I appreciate you listening to us. I appreciate your prayers.